close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch your breath all the way in and all the way out. And keep watch over your mind as well and make sure it doesn't go slipping off away someplace else. So you've got two watchers here, the one that's watching the breath and the one that's watching the mind. That one watching the mind has to have a lot of good qualities, because otherwise the first part of the mind just gets to slip off anywhere it wants. And if the second part doesn't comment, it doesn't say anything about it, then meditation doesn't go anywhere. You have to note, okay, this is something I don't want to do. I want to get back. Bring the mind back. There are a lot of ways you can motivate that second part of the mind. One of the ones that the Buddha recommends is very important in all of our parts of our lives, not just the meditation, is a sense of shame and a sense of compunction. Shame is when you realize that something is beneath you. You're all, after all, you've made up your mind you're going to meditate, which is a noble activity, and then you go searching around the garbage for who knows what. That's really nothing to be doing right now, and you're above that. You're better than that. Shame here is a healthy emotion. There, of course, is unhealthy shame. Healthy shame, though, is having a sense of pride. Healthy pride. Pride in being, doing your best. Being always willing to learn. And then here you are not willing to learn. You're off doing something else. That's something to be ashamed of. So you use that shame to help you keep your mind in line. And this applies to all sorts of aspects of life. The same with compunction. Compunction is a realization of if I do this, there's going to be bad results down the line. And so you tell yourself, you convince yourself not to do it. You're not apathetic. You don't say, well, I'll take care of that down the line. I'll take what I want right now. That's not a good attitude. Because otherwise people just keep on taking what they want, what they want, what they want, and putting off, thinking that they're going to put off the results to a point where they don't really have to worry about them. But then when they come, then they complain. And this is why they, shame and compunction are called protectors of the world. They keep society going. Because without a sense of shame and compunction, you behave yourself only in front of other people. And then when you're off on your own, you can do anything you want or you're acting and hiding. But if your shame and compunction, compunction are strong, then there's no hiding place, because you're right there all the time. And as the Buddha said, these are treasures, because these are the things that do you a lot of good in the sense that they protect you from doing things that you're later going to regret. You hear stories about people who during the war did bad things, or in the course of their business, or in the course of their career in government did bad things, and they really regret it. They say they'd give any amount of money not to have done that. But well, you don't have to give that amount of money. Just don't do it to begin with. That's what shame and compunction do for you. They protect you from doing things that you regret for a long time to come. So keep these two qualities strongly in mind. They're your protectors, and they protect the world around you. This is how we live together as a society, so we can trust other people even when they're not right in our eyesight. Because we learn how to trust ourselves, realizing, okay, whatever we do is in our own eyesight all the time in the sense that there's no secret place in the world, because you're right there watching what you're doing. So make sure that these two qualities are there keeping control over and restraining you from doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, and convincing yourself that you should be doing the good things that need to be done in their place. It's a very basic principle, but a lot of times you will look at the way the world is going right now. These two principles are missing all over the place. This is why we have war. This is why we have oppression. Because people have no sense of shame. And you can't wait for them to have a sense of shame. You just start with your own sense of shame. Say, this is a healthy thing to do. It's a sign of a good person that you have that sense. And at the very least, that keeps your own actions protected. That way you're giving your own actions as a gift to the world. And it's a gift to yourselves as well. <laughs>